In this segment, uh, we will introduce uh, soft switching in DC or DC converters. So, uh, before we go into soft switching, uh, let us look at uh, hard switching that uh, we have seen in a previous segment and uh, let us take an example of a buck converter and the output stage is represented by this uh, current source here I0 here and uh, let us assume, <coughs> assume an ideal diode and uh, you can see here that every time this uh, MOSFET is turned on or turned off, uh, we have a switching power loss here. And uh, this switching power loss depends upon the, the switching uh, characteristics of this uh, MOSFET, how long it takes, and it is uh, linearly proportional to the switching frequency. Uh, more often we switch, more often we will have uh, the energy loss uh, in this uh, MOSFET which corresponds to the average switching power loss. So we have seen these waveforms. And uh, in uh, soft switching, our intent is to uh, at least to minimize, if not totally eliminate, these uh, switching power losses. So <clears throat> there are two types of switchings, uh, soft switchings. One is uh, zero voltage switching, and the other is zero current switching. Uh, we will in, uh, look at only the zero voltage switching in here. And uh, so what happens here is. Uh, uh, let us say that uh, this MOSFET uh, is shown explicitly by its uh, uh, you know, reverse conducting diode in anti, uh, this conducting diode with uh, anti parallel diode, I should say, and uh, we will put a capacitor. It could be the, the you know, internal capacitance of the FET itself, but we may end up adding an external capacitor here. So, uh, in this case, uh, let us say that initially the, the FET is off and uh, the current is flowing through this anti parallel diode in the direction shown over here. So the voltage across this uh, FET is essentially zero. So if you turn this FET on here, well, uh, we are turning this on essentially at zero voltage, and then current can reverse in direction and flow through the channel of this MOSFET over here. And now, in the second case, uh, let us say that uh, initially the current is flowing, flowing through the channel of this uh, MOSFET as shown here, and we want to turn it off. So, uh, when the current is flowing through the MOSFET, the voltage across this FET is essentially zero, right? And uh, when we turn it off, uh, if we have this capacitor in parallel, the voltage across this capacitor cannot change very quickly. So, the current would go to zero, this would turn off, uh, while the voltage across the FET is essentially zero. So we have achieved an essentially zero uh, voltage turn off here. Okay, so that is really the principle behind it. So we will uh, introduce uh, this principle into a synchronous buck converter, with, uh, and we will introduce this zero voltage switching. So in a synchronous uh, buck converter, this uh, freewheeling diode is replaced by another MOSFET. And uh, these two MOSFETs here are sig uh, gated by complementary signals Q plus and Q minus, and they are shown in this diagram over here. Okay, so Q plus is on uh, during the duty ratio times the time period, and then uh, Q uh, Q minus uh, takes over the complementary signal. So we have seen the buck uh, converter operation, and uh, this may result in this inductor current IL to be, let's say, of this waveform here, this one here, okay, which is shown with a very small ripple. Okay, so it is uh, always positive and uh, goes from some minimum value to some maximum value. But let's say that under the same operating conditions, same input voltage, same output voltage desired based on the duty ratio, uh, we decrease the value of this inductance L over here. So the consequence would be that the ripple in IL would increase, okay, because you have reduced the inductance. Well, uh, this current now can become both positive, uh, can assume a positive value 
uh, which could be as high as this one, th this here, and also a negative value, which could be somewhere here. So to achieve this uh, zero voltage switching, we must have both positive as well as a negative value every switching time period. And uh, we'll see that uh, uh, you know we need to put some delay time between the turning off of the upper transistor and turning on of the lower transistor here. So we'll introduce some delay time here, which is needed to uh, charge and discharge these capacitors in parallel shown over here. And we'll assume them to be equal for the most part here. All right, so based on that, let's analyze what happens here. So initially, this uh, top transistor is conducting, okay? And uh, <clears throat> so the voltage across this top transistor, this uh, VC plus is equal to uh, zero. And uh, uh, therefore, this voltage across the lower transistor, VC minus, is equal to Vn over here, all right? So what we'll do is we will uh, turn off this top transistor. So we're applying Q plus of zero over here, which turns off this channel over here. So, so what happens is, uh, are, are here, let's just stay with this circuit here. We turn it off here. So uh, when we do that, this current IL hat, uh, that has to flow. So how does it flow? Well, it, uh, what happens, uh, well, what happens, let's look at it by equations, that uh, if you apply voltage, Kirchhoff's voltage law in this loop over here, okay, you'll see that the sum of Vc plus and Vc minus is equal to Vn over here. Let's uh, take the time derivative of both sides and we get uh, uh, this term, this term, and the time derivative of Vn is zero and multiply the, both sides by the capacitance C, where C plus is equal to C minus is equal to C here, okay? Same value applied across both uh, transistors, okay? So we can see that uh, this term is equal to IC plus as defined here, and uh, this is equal to IC minus uh, as defined here, right here. So, uh, so you can see that uh, from this equation, the sum of IC plus and IC minus is equal to zero, and uh, therefore, uh, you know, one is negative of the other. Uh, the second equation we get by noting that we have, if you look at the circuit, the IC plus is coming in here like this, okay? Then IC minus is like this here, and then you have IL hat like this here, right? So if you apply Kirchhoff's uh, current law at this node, uh, and noting that this is the case, we can see that uh, these two currents are equal to IL over two. So what is going on in this circuit, if I may erase uh, all, all this ink over here, uh, is that uh, when we turn off this transistor, uh, you know, uh, this current here uh, flows uh, from, some of the current comes through this capacitor like this, and some of the current comes through this capacitor like this over here. So what this is doing is, you know, it is charging this uh, Vc plus from zero to Vn, and it's discharging this uh, lower capacitor Vc minus from Vn down to zero. It cannot go below zero because there's a diode connected across this uh, lower capacitance and therefore the current would begin to flow uh, through this, uh, di this diode over here uh, at some point and then we can gate on this uh, lower transistor and then the current would flow through the channel of this uh, transistor. So what we have shown here is how uh, we can uh, turn off this upper transistor at zero voltage and how we can turn on this uh, lower transistor at zero voltage when the anti its anti-parallel diode was conducting. 
So we have shown both ZVS off for the top transistor and ZVS on for the bottom transistor. And the same thing happens uh, when this IL here is in a negative uh, direction over here, has a negative value. So I'm plotting IL over here. Uh, so it's negative. And similarly, we can show that uh, when we turn off the, the bottom transistor, we are turning it off at zero voltage and we are turning the top transistor on at zero voltage. Okay, so we can simulate that using PSPICE. And uh, here we see uh, in purple the waveform for I sub L over here, and uh, the gating signal for two transistors are shown in uh, green uh, for one and uh, red for the other. Uh, this concept can be applied to phase shift modulated uh, DC to DC converters, where uh, you know this VA, if you assume this to be ground just for uh, the sake of discussion, this VA and VO, uh, they are uh, all, almost rectangular, uh, but they are phase shifted with respect to each other. And as a consequence, we produce this high frequency AC voltage across the primary of this transformer over here. Okay, so this is uh, a very common application of soft switching in DC to DC converters, but uh, this is uh, beyond the scope of our discussion. <coughs> so we will not go into it. So it comes, it brings us to the conclusion of this uh, segment where at least where we, we have seen the concept, concept of soft switching in DC to DC converters.